Dude, the world of amphibious all-terrain vehicles has just gotten bigger. And fatter with the fat truck. Dude, yes, recently we had a chance to actually see this truck at the work truck show in Indianapolis. And in this video, we'll show you a little interview uh, that has to do with that. But how about in this particular news video, we go over all the specs and show you guys the truck moving. That sounds like a really good idea. And I bet a lot of them are asking, well, isn't that a Sherp? Well, no, no, no. And according to Fat Truck and Rent PTR, which is basically a construction truck rental company mm -hmm. that also is a dealership for, for this particular truck, they say it's a completely separate company. Uh, also, uh, this, these trucks are built in Canada. Uh -huh. um, and well, let's just look at the uh, dimensions, first of all. So the Fat Truck is about 101 inches wide, 101 inches tall, and 146.5 inches in length. So it's nearly a box. It's almost a cube. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the thing is, is that its length, just to you know, keep this in mind, it's about a foot shorter in length than a Honda Fit. Yes, but it's amphibious and it's got gigantic tires and you can adjust the tire pressure you know, while moving. So it's got basically a central tire inflation system right. and deflation system. A fully inflated tire is only running about five pounds of pressure in there. Deflated will go down to about 1.5 pounds. So with this thing be running on uh, beat locks? So this, uh, this thing, does, it does have beat locks, correct. Okay. Um, so puncture rates, very minimal on these. These things are, are built to basically tackle the task that you can't accomplish in any other type of vehicle. So it's basically like a military truck, just on a smaller scale. Right, once again though, very similar to the Sherp. Yeah, but let's look at the new Sherp, because that's also coming out soon, right? So the new Sherp is about 99 inches wide, so a little bit less mm -hmm. than the Fat Truck. 112 inches tall, so almost a foot taller than the Fat Truck, and 156 inches long, which is about 10 inches longer than the Fat Truck. So dimensions are a little bit different. Right, and if I'm correct, the Sherp will be able to hold more people. Yes, the new Sherp has a capacity of up to 10 people, mm -hmm. the Fat Truck up to eight. And here's a look inside of it to see exactly how you get in. See a little bit of the cab here. Again, going back to the safety features, big key things, everything on here. Three points of contact for your steps with all the bars safety grab handles so basically you open the front door right mm -hmm. a little f ladder folds open right which is pretty neat and there are two seats up there so they're like the driver and the front passenger right, right. and then in the back it's like kind of a folding seats like stadium seats right for extra people right it, it, it's it's a lot like a military vehicle in terms of a transport yeah, so what's powering this beast? Yeah, that's a really good question. So for the fat truck specifically, it's a 2.2 liter Caterpillar four cylinder, and they're saying there are two power levels. Mm. So 49 horsepower or up to 67 horsepower, right. just depending on the tune, I guess, of this engine. And really soon, uh, I hope to get, you know, hands-on experience with the fat truck. So we'll get to drive it. I can't wait for that. Now, what is its payload? So payload is 2,200 pounds, and that's similar or almost the same to the new Sherp as well. Interesting. So eight people, eight of us, that's okay, right? 2,200 pounds. Now, bear in mind, this is not what we'd call a race car. Its top speed is 25 miles per hour. Yes. Um, but in water, its top speed is two miles per hour. That's not the same as the Sherp. Right, right. So, and this is interesting. So these big tires, and they can be up to six feet tall. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are very unique tires. When they're fully inflated. R right. And uh, they also act like paddles, mm -hmm. right? So you're going on land, you're going through any terrain. You know, the vehicle is pretty small. Also, you could turn with a joystick on the fat truck. Mm -hmm. So you're actually controlling it, not with a steering wheel, but almost like a tank would be. That's right. It's a hydrostatic transmission. And basically what you're doing is you're having either one side or the other side kick in in order to maneuver. The cool thing about this is that it, it can sit on a plane and turn in zero degrees, basically do a 360. Within its, its own dimension. That right? is correct, without having to really do any type of uh, special things. You don't have to flip a bunch of switches, you just hit it. And that's the cool part, it turns like a tank. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's like a Rivian truck. 
<laughs> not quite. That's, not that's even so, close. That's something completely, completely different. Completely different topic, guys. Right, right. Um, so this particular truck has the capability of climbing up to 35 degrees up or down. Mm -hmm. It has a braking system that helps you kind of hold on a slope. Right. So it's kind of supposed to be a little bit easier to drive. The fat truck is also meant for like construction work. So it's got like strobe lights, you know, a lot of handles, and it's very safety is very important on the construction side, right? Right, or, right. Or, or anywhere for that matter. Well, as you were saying, this is a Canadian company, and one of the things they can do is they can actually rent this vehicle out. And I, w I suppose one of the things you would do with this is you would go looking for pipeline routes and whatnot or places to start construction. This is your all-terrain vehicle that can get you just about anywhere, including over, you know, bogs, creeks, water, snow, ice, dirt, rocks, you name it. Typically what we're seeing these are in a power utility sector, so out on the right-of-way type deal, or we're seeing them used on a lot of wind farms, and we're also seeing them used in the pipeline community. Now is this kind of to get the crew out there to get the work done? Lot, this is the, this model is set up to absolutely haul and transport individuals. Mm -hmm. It has an 18 and a half gallon fuel capacity and you would say well how many miles can you go, can it go? Well they don't state range. What they state is at half throttle, 50% RPM, you can drive for about 10 hours. Okay. So that's a full work day. So let's say you filled up at your headquarters, you went out, or your house or something. Right. Right. You went out, you drove for about eight to ten hours, you got back, and now you have to refill. I would imagine having an external tank would be a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> and like there's that. space to put them on. Oh yeah, right. all those bars and everything else, lots of mounting uh, positions. So the question is, you mentioned the fact that you can rent this vehicle. Right. So what does it cost to rent one of these? So the guys at Rent PTR uh, told me that nine thousand thousand dollars per month okay. so they're not doing like daily rates but but if you're doing a construction project or if you want a vehicle to you know build a new house or do some some work nine thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. but you could purchase it oh yeah how much outright one hundred twenty seven thousand now that may seem like a really expensive price. It does seem quite high. But you have to consider that this is a purpose-built vehicle and one of the things about it that Andre and I were discussing off camera is the fact that this would be an ideal vehicle to use with hurricane relief and yeah. disaster relief because it can go almost anywhere. And, and it floats. And it does float and, and it, it has a yeah. decent passenger capacity yeah. for such a small vehicle. So let's say you rented say five or six of these things to go into a neighborhood and try to get people who are trapped and get them out of there this might be a really good solution. Yeah, or like fire departments or rescue uh, organizations can buy a couple of these or, exactly. a, or a fleet of these. And they, it also comes with a trailer. Uh, you know, Sherp announced a while ago that they also have a kind of a power trailer solution. They called the Arc. Right. Uh, this one also has a smaller, much smaller trailer, but still you can carry things, cargo, supplies. Uh, maybe even a stretcher or something like that um, to kind of bring people in and out. The trailer floats uh, cool. and it has a hard folding aluminum cover so if you do go into water you do have the capabilities of securing and keeping your cargo dry. Do we know how much this thing weighs? Yes, so uh, curb weight, basically, if you were to deliver it somewhere, mm -hmm. about 5,000 pounds. Okay. So it's not huge. I mean, if you compare it to a side-by-side, -side, I mean, that way up to about 2,000 pounds, like a Razor would be, I mean, this is a whole different ball game. Yeah, but this isn't a toy that you go and bounce around and fly off dunes Not with. really, and 25 miles an hour is a top speed on, on land. Yeah, so once again, <laughs> not exactly in the same category. Right. The thing is, is that it does weigh about the same as a fairly heavy duty SUV. Yeah, but less than a pick, like a heavy duty pickup truck. Right. Those can weigh between seven and 9,000 pounds. This is 5,000, so it's like a, a Land Rover or something like that. Yeah, something along in, those in lines. Weight. We need one of these. We do, indeed. I really love the fact that you can also drive it on either side of the cabin with the joystick control. So for our friends in Great Britain, Australia, and Japan, piece of cake, right? Right, cool. And they have different color schemes. You have camo, you have different colors. Uh, you can do like a police version, an ambulance version. So, I mean, possibilities are endless. And it's really interesting that more companies are going into the space, right? Yeah, it is interesting. It'll be really interesting to see how it compares to the Sherp. Now, the bottom line is that this is built in Canada and hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on one soon, which is awesome. Yes, and also our buddy Dan Atkinson. So he provided the interview from the work truck show. So big thanks to Dan. Thank you, Dan. And also Dan was very keen. 
he also took pictures of the hitches. So mm -hmm. this truck has a hitch in the front and a hitch in the back. So in theory, you could put like a hitch mounted a winch, you know, to winch things or clear roads or help other people. Or you could tow stuff. Or you can tow stuff up to 3,500 pounds on the front or the back. Oh, that's cool. So you can tow both ways, I guess. <laughs> 1,500 pounds on one side and 17 on the other. Yeah, right. um, anyway, so it's a fun vehicle, guys. Let us know in the comments below what you think about this. Um, and also, you know, do you want to see more of this type of stuff? Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. And of course, go back to tfltruck.com and also tfloffroad.com where Steven, I'm sure he's keen on this vehicle. Uh, he's Canadian. He's going to get his hands on one. <laughs>